So for this optimization problem, we're trying to maximize income. And if we remember from the previous videos, the first thing I need to do is come up with a function, and then I'm going to take the derivative of it, I'm going to set the derivative equal to zero, and then I'm going to figure out what to do with my answer. So they're asking us here to find maximum income. So that tells me that I need an income function. And so I'll go ahead and write one, and I'll call it i of x. And so this problem is about a car rental agency. They're renting a certain number of cars at a certain rate per day. And that rate changes. And as the rate changes, the number of cars change. But the basic idea is if we want to figure out what their income is, I need to know the number of cars that they're renting and then also the rate per car. And so let's figure that out because that function, number of cars times rate per car, tells me exactly how much money they're getting. So it says here that they start out with 200 cars. So I'll go ahead and do 200 here. They also say that the starting rate is $30 per car, so I'm going to put $30 here. Then they say they're increasing the rate by a dollar. And so now comes time to figure out what my x is. And in this case, my x, and I'll label it over here, x equals an increase in rate. And so technically, technically, I'll write it here for a second, but I'll take it away. Um, for every increase of a dollar, that one means it's going up a dollar, and x is every time it increases. But I'm going to take away the one because it just kind of confuses things a little bit. So every time they increase the rate, they rent five fewer cars. So my number of cars is going to be minus five cars for every increase in the rate. And so that's the function that I need to work with. I've got a choice now at this point about how I want to handle this function. I know I need to take a derivative, so the options that I've got are, are that I can use the product rule to multiply these two functions together and take the derivative, or I could just FOIL it and use the power rule. And I'm going to do that because that tends to be a bit simpler. So 20 times 30, that's going to give me, or 200 times 30, sorry, gives me 6,000. Uh, 200 times x, that'll be plus 200x. Negative 5x times 30 is going to give me negative 150x, and negative 5 times x is going to give me negative 5x squared. Make sure you don't forget to include that coefficient there. So if it's a negative 5, make sure it's a negative 5x. Uh, depending on the version of your problem, it might be a negative 10. Make sure it's a negative 10x squared when you get your answer down here. You don't want to miss it because you forgot that. All right, let's collect like terms. That's going to give me 6,000 plus 50x minus 5x squared. And that looks like something I wouldn't mind taking a derivative of. All right, so let's do it. I prime of x. Derivative of 6,000 is 0. Derivative of 50x is 50. And the derivative of negative 5x squared, that's going to be negative 10x found my function, took the derivative, now I need to set my derivative equal to 0. So I have negative 10x equals negative 50, and so that's going to give me x equals 5. And now I need to figure out what to do with my answer. Well, what's x? x is an increase in rate. So what are they asking me for? Um, the rental agency will earn a maximum income of... Well, we see what the answer is here. Let's make sure we can find it um, when it charges blank per day. Okay, well, if I need to figure out what the maximum income is, I need to take that 5 and plug it into my income function. So let's go ahead and do that. I of 5 equals 6,000. And I'm plugging it into the simplest version of the function here, the last one that I did before I took the derivative. Honestly, you can plug it into any step, but this one's just going to be a little bit cleaner. So 6,000 plus 50 times 5 minus 5 times 5 squared. And so let's type that into the calculator, give you a chance to do that too. 
definitely do type it into the calculator. Don't take my word for it, because I want to make sure that you're getting parentheses in the places that you need to get them to get the same answer that I do. So definitely practicing with the calculator is helpful. But if you do type that into the calculator, you get 61.25, which is the answer they were looking for here. And now it's asking how much it's supposed to charge per day. And so one of the biggest mistakes that I see on this problem is people are like, oh, five was the increase, so it's going to be five per day. But that's not correct. The rate that we're looking for is this 30 plus X. So the rate coming from 30 plus X is going to be 30 plus, well, X equals five. So 30 plus five, which is... 35 and so that's the rate that they should charge this $35 per day so we found our function by taking the number of cars times the rate per car we took the derivative we set the derivative equal to 0 found out that it equaled 5 to find the maximum income we plugged that 5 into our income function and to find the rate that they're supposed to charge we took 5 and plugged it into the rate part of our original function. So it's really helpful if you label that original function. Here I labeled it number of cars and rate per car, so that when they ask you about a specific portion of it, that you're able to plug into the right place without too much confusion. And so that is one of the business optimization problems. This one is very similar to, you might have some on your homework or on your test review, um, about an apple tree or an apple farm. There's also one about a cherry farm and these problems are all set up basically the same way. Um, you can watch the video for one of those in this playlist but you'll see that the process is very similar. It's just once you get your X you need to figure out what to do with it.